Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top headlines today. A man is in the hospital recovering after authorities say he stole and crashed an ambulance in Omaha. You can see the aftermath of the crash in this picture shared by Omaha police. Authorities tell us a patient at CHI Health Emanuel stole the ambulance belonging to Midwest Medical Transport. The suspect drove about a mile north of the hospital before crashing. Medical personnel then had to transport the suspect to another hospital, Nebraska Medicine, with what were called serious injuries. President Joe Biden's new executive order aimed at securing the U.S.-Mexico border has gone into effect. Sherelle Hubbard has more on how Biden's executive action is being received. President Joe Biden's new immigration order turned from words on Tuesday. I'm moving past Republican obstruction and using the executive authorities available to me as president to do what I can on my own to address the border. Into action on Wednesday with agents escorting migrants back to Mexico. The new executive action uses an authority known as 212F, a regulation used under the Trump administration. It restricts migrants seeking asylum, shuts off access to asylum to migrants crossing the border illegally when a daily threshold of 2,500 encounters or more is met. Migrants can still request an asylum appointment. Some migrants say even with the new executive order, they shall not be deterred. They have been saying the same thing for a long time, since Trump was there. They are saying that the border is going to be closed. They built a fence. They built the wall. But still, the amount of people that come from our countries is too large. We are certain that we will arrive, and we are convinced that we will be there working. And the American Civil Liberties Union already announced that it plans to challenge the move in court, just as it did during Trump-era immigration policies. We said that that was illegal when he tried an asylum ban that we think is very similar to the one that President Biden is doing. We think it remains illegal, and so we will challenge that in court. I'm Sherelle Hubbard reporting. A southern Gage County town finds itself again without a police chief. After just 10 months on the job, Bobby Martinez submitted his resignation to Wymore's mayor and city council. It was formally accepted by city officials Wednesday. Martinez was sworn in as chief last August. Now, Mayor Colin Mainz says the city's getting help from the Gage County Sheriff's Office as it decides what to do next. So the Sheriff's Office will cover the 911 or emergency type calls, um, the ordinance violation, nuisance violation stuff will be forwarded onto the city office or myself. Over on yard, your trash, your dog, dog, dog complaints, um, Sheriff's Office will handle any dog at large calls or dangerous dog calls. Martinez came to Wymore from Sydney, where he was with the Cheyenne County Sheriff's Office. He'll become the new police chief now in Valley, a larger department. A full staff for Wymore Police in the past has been a chief, a full-time officer, and a part-time officer. Wymore Fire Chief Mark Mainz, Security Coordinator for Southeast Community College, also serves part-time as Wymore Police Officer. Some council members expressed dismay about Martinez apparently referring to a lack of support in his letter of resignation. Well, it's never too early or too late to start saving for a child's post-secondary education. That's the message of State Treasurer Tom Breezy, who's crisscrossing the state, touting Nebraska's Nest 529 Savings Plan. The college savings plan allows Nebraskans to make tax-deductible contributions into an account where their earnings grow tax-free. Breezy says while contributors get tax benefits, the greater benefit can be seen in the student who can go to college with part of the cost already defrayed. I think we all agree on the importance of higher education. You know, higher education really can be a game changer in the lives of our young folks. You know, whether we're talking a four-year degree, a two-year degree, tech school, vocational school, even an apprenticeship, they can really have a, that can really have an impact on their lives. The accounts are eligible to all Nebraska children, whether they go to a four-year, a two-year, or a trade school. Breezy says getting more kids into post-secondary education will have a long-term impact on what's become a workforce crisis in Nebraska. 
We have roughly 60,000 unfilled jobs. I read somewhere here recently we're going to have uh, be short about 5,000 nurses by 2025. We've lost a couple thousand truckers in the last few years. I could go on and on. But, but in the big picture, this is also important to helping us solve our workforce needs. Breezy is planning in-person open houses to discuss the 529 plans in person over the next month in Seward, Gretna, Wahoo, and Beatrice. You can get the full schedule and links to more information at NewsChannelNebraska.com. Well, this past Wednesday in Grand Island, officials broke ground on a new affordable housing project. Ana Ruth Lugo Mejia has the details. City leaders are working to address the lack of housing in Grand Island. This will be a great benefit for Grand Island. I said earlier, we have a wonderful problem. We are growing a lot, and when you grow a lot, you need housing. So This lot will soon be filled with three fiveplexes totaling 50 new homes. Eight of the homes in Hope Development's Orker subdivision will be reserved for residents at or below 120% of the area median income for 10 years. Grand Island Area Economic Development President Mary Burley says the $750,000 that Grand Island received from the Nebraska Affordable Housing Trust Fund will benefit the city. Grand Island is strategically growing and because of that we need to have additional housing resources for our residents, old and new. This development will only add to this housing growth that Grand Island is currently experiencing. This is the first time Grand Island has received a financial award of this kind. Hope Development CEO Fred Hope says housing is critical to a city's prosperity. Grand Island is a pretty growing community, okay? And it is growing, and to have business growth, to have employment growth, you got to have housing that matches it. Hope says construction will start soon on the houses and will take about nine months to finish. In Grand Island, Ana Ruth Luco Mejia, New Channel, Nebraska. Staying in central Nebraska, the state fair might be losing one of its scheduled concerts. In a post on his Facebook page, Latino artist Ramon Ayala says he's canceling all of his tour dates this year. He's scheduled to perform at the state fair on August 29th. A news outlets around the country reported that Ayala was canceling concerts elsewhere. A translation of Ayala's Facebook post indicated the cancellations were due to what he calls reasons beyond his control. State fair officials said Wednesday they're trying to verify the information about Ayala. Well, over summer break, children can stop learning if not lose some of what they learned over the course of a school year. Casey Wannenberg takes us to a Valentine group looking to help prevent that so-called summer brain drain. Pop top, jube jube, dead rat. <laughs> Five girls, one small couch. Every child is named Nel Melvin. And lots of laughs. <laughs> These girls are members of the Valentine Public Library's new summer book club named Shh, We're Reading. The group will read a new book every four weeks and then discuss it together. And I plan on doing lots of activities, having a snack, something that will go along with the book. Children who have access. To Assistant Library Director Nicole Garwood authored the idea of the club. To rent these books out. Hoping to get more so, kids to dive into books this summer. Oh wow, this is a very depressing sentence. It's very important for kids to read over the summer. A lot of what they retain during school year is lost due to summer brain drain. 10 to 15 minutes a day. In fact, research published in American Educational Research Journal found that children Elise, can lose up to 40% of the gains they made over the school year while on summer break. Reading is critical to a child's ability to retain information as well as grow in knowledge and critical thinking skills. In addition to reading, here are some other tips to help prevent summer brain drain. Encourage your child to journal, maybe buy a math workbook, but just make fun family activities like cooking or gardening a learning experience. And like it, there's other people reading like the same book with you, it's more fun. A fun summer activity. Because then you can talk to them about weird things in the book. That's much better with friends. Yeah, yeah books are way better with friends. In Valentine, Casey Wunnenberg, News Pop Channel, talk, Nebraska. YouTube, <laughs> a dead rat barrel roll. And a Northeast Nebraska woman making music history in the state of Nebraska. Andrew Pfeiffer has more.